United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before, and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. I mean, we might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. Everybody, I guess we're going to reboot here real quick. But uh, welcome to the Wayne Dupree Show, ladies and gentlemen. Wayne will be with us shortly, I imagine. Uh, my name is Hutch Bailey Jr., and I am located in my studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Let's take it over to Minnesota. Hey, hey, hey top of the morning, Hutch. And uh, folks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, before we get started, we got a big show, a lot to go over today. Uh, make sure you take a minute to do a like, comment, and share. That's how we help beat the uh, the big tech algorithm. Wayne uh, Wayne was busy working this Labor Day weekend on some new graphics, so he's just making sure everything uh, lines up right. So, oh yeah, yeah, he's sitting there. We can see him. You guys can't. He's giving us the head. You ought to see that. You ought to see the hat he's wearing. It's something else. That's oh my it. gosh, it's like Sean. Can you believe he's going Afro Hutch? <laughs> I mean, we took a we took a listener poll. Wayne's gonna go like, oh, what was that dude from Good Times? The the yeah. big fro guy. JJ. Yeah. <laughs> He's going JJ Walker. <laughs> oh boy, what a what a heck of a weekend. Uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh my birthday weekend. I had all grandkids everywhere, man. It was uh, a good time. We took care of the this time. I love this time of year. This is like harvest time. So I had to take care of I think I can 14 16 quarts of tomato sauce and a bunch of quarts of whole tomatoes. It was a good time. It was. Oh, wow. Happy birthday. It's good you got to hang out with the fam. It is. A couple days in a row, actually. It was great. Yeah. I got to say, August is one of those great months. Congress is out of session, not that anybody noticed. So the news cycle slows down. And if you look back the last four to six weeks, there wasn't a ton breaking. Congress wasn't in there wrecking the world. So it's kind of a nice time to charge, get some R&R recharge your batteries, and then this week things are going to just start firing right off. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting week. Um, a lot of pretending going on out there, uh, just a whole lot of pretending, um, and a whole lot of malfeasance. I mean, uh, I'll tell you, if there was ever a time to pay attention to what party politics is, it's right now. Everybody is the master off. Uh, there's no question there's a unified uh, effort to bring down MAGA, to bring down populism. And it's uh, it, it's out there thicker than thick in the Republican uh, side of the corporate world. I mean, what they're going to do in Iowa, they haven't, they haven't, in Iowa, they usually come down with a certain date where if you're going to vote Republican, you're going to declare Republican, you got to say so by this date. And they didn't do that this year because- yep. What they did, what the Democrat Party did, the Democrat National Committee, uh, they moved the first in the nation primary to South Carolina. 
So during, but the Republican Party did not. Right. So you've got a first in the nation primary in Iowa with Democrats not having anything to do. So they've got these people, they've got a thousand paid people, DeSantis types on the ground, and they've got, uh, they're, they're going to push Democrats to vote in the Republican. This is how bad the Republican Party is. Right. I, I couldn't believe this once I, once I figured this out or somebody told me or wh- whenever this came into my mind, I couldn't believe that Republicans would rather lose an election than lose control. And that's where we are right now. These idiots that are running the Republican Party are a danger, a detriment to our nation. And we should stomp them out. I, I've totally changed my tune into identifying them into we must destroy them. Because if we don't, we're getting Democrats for the rest of our lives. Well, here's what you have to understand. And and this is a key concept. And we talked about it last week in the show where where most people watching this show and ourselves as mega voters, we are not Republicans. We happen to vote with the Republican Party because that's the establishment. Like they're on the ballots. They have they have those things. And, and they say they fit our values, but they don't. They they don't. We count. We've counted on them for decades to protect constitutionalism, to protect the judiciary, to to actually protect everyday Americans in Washington. And and they MAGA was born not because of Democrats, but because of a feckless Republican Party that has nothing to do with standing up for our rights as citizens. And and I was a prime example. I mean, it's going to be Waterloo for Ron DeSantis. You know, people are speculating he's going to win. And, and like you say, Democrats cleared the board. So if you're a re- if you're a Democrat in Iowa in the caucus, you can go vote in the Republican caucus and you can vote for somebody other than President Trump. And these caucuses, I, I've got friends down in Iowa. I mean, they're held at like the fire station and then it's people that go there and register and then they just kind of go, okay, if you're for DeSantis, go sit over in this section. And if you're for Trump, go sit over here and then people can get up and move around. And, and yeah, I mean, for the DeSantis campaign, they have to win Iowa because they have put all their eggs in one basket. I just saw a poll that he's losing in New Hampshire to Christy and Nikki Haley now. Yeah, Haley, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And it's, uh, I mean, once once Trump wins Ohio, Iowa, then it's then it's Katie bars the door. He's going to win everything, right? Um, that's just the way these things work. I mean, and it's it's not the way it works every time. But we've got a quality guy up there for once. I mean, that doesn't normally happen. Uh, normally, the uh, drama in Iowa doesn't even turn out to be the one who wins. But uh, I think it's a little different. And f- by the way, thank you for the birthday wishes. As I teeter on senility, as Mark says, uh, but. Yeah, it, it's going to be, like I said, I think the most important thing is you got to understand the makeup of the two sides of the corporate fraudsters. Right. That all they're trying to do, and, and don't don't fall for the thing that the idea that Republicans are just weak and they're just that, that's not no. the case. They're not weak. You want to if you want to see Republicans are meaner than Democrats. If you want to see a Republican show his fangs a corporate Republican getting away of his money. Right. That's how you will see. They will, they will cut your face off for getting in the way of their money. And that's where we're at right now. We're going to have from now to the election, depending on the legal sideshow, uh, we're going to see open hostility toward all of us, toward Trump and Trump supporters. If you've noticed the web uh, is getting, the, the ring is getting larger and larger and large 19 co-defendants. Right. Uh, I think we're going to have one of them on here. Absolutely. Uh, uh, but that that's what it's its trying to scare you. That's what they're trying to do here. And uh, well, and it's interesting, too. You used a great word when you said corporate Republicans, because, you know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and Democrats always accused Republicans of being the party of big business, being just in it for the money, just, you know, cutting deals for them and their rich friends. And they were 100 percent right. Now, the Democrat Party has become just as corrupt as the Republican Party is in different ways. They seek more power than money. But as you look up Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy, all these folks, they are not fighting for Americans' best interests. And we're going to get to see it this month because, and we've talked about it on the show, but September 30th, they got to get the budget resolution passed. Right now, the 
What do you think is going to happen with that? I don't think they have enough time. I know they don't. Well, I, I think we're going to see an omnibus bill, if I had to guess. And Vacate I, the they, chair. Vacate the freaking chair. Yep. I'm so and, tired of this. And just to explain procedurally what, so, so folks understand. So when they pass the last omnibus bill, they basically kick the can and the debt ceiling bill. So we have no debt ceiling till after 2024 election. Gov Congress can spend as much money as they want, unfettered. The national debt is up to $38.7 trillion or $32.8 trillion. So that's exploding. Um, and they have to pass these, and I believe it's 12, Hutch, you know more of the mechanics of it than I do, budget resolutions to fund different parts of government by the 30th of this month. And there's only 16 working days in Congress. I mean, yeah, if I done. remember, if I remember, and it's been decades since we've done this, uh, this is the only job the House really has. Right. And, and some years it took almost a whole year to do it. Right. I mean, because there's more than one step to it, you know, and, and it's uh, you've got each agency being funded and there's all kinds of arguments and, and different things that go on with that. But there's no way they do it in one month. Ladies and gentlemen, Wayne Dupree. Wayne Dupree. Man, that VA is <laughs> I was wait I was waiting for the VA. I was telling the guys I was like 24, 25, and by the time we get ready to start the show, it was down to six. And then um then that music started. And then and then the music started. I said, okay, well, I'll let them go. At 1206, it was down to one. <laughs> 006 is down to one. Okay, bet. I'm gonna get this down. I'm explaining myself when I'm and then she transfers me to someplace else. Number 18. <laughs> and you've been on hold all morning and you'd like <laughs> want to do something simple like change an appointment or something dumb. I have to say, um, and thank you, Hutch, the Godfather Conservative Radio, Ooh. and Mr. J.R. J.R. Robinson out of Muslim Soda. I want to uh, uh you know, we'll 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 talk about the holiday and everything and stuff right here. But uh, we we have a very important young man. Uh, actually, I, I have known him for a while. Actually, uh, we haven't we haven't stayed in contact with each other because the man is busy. Uh, but um, you know, I I when I saw what was happening to him, you know, I you know first thing I did was pr I, I prayed a lot. I prayed a lot and. I, uh, when everything was taken care of, I was like, I reached out to him last week. I was like, listen, I want to get you on because we got to get your information up. We got to get your information up. We got to let people know uh, about you and where and where things are. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me bring on my brother, Harrison Floyd. What's up, man? What up, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? I'm you all right? You okay? Your favorite. How are you, man? Blessed and highly favored, man. Yeah, uh, man, man, I was. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was in that six-hour traffic yesterday, and uh, over the Bay Bridge and stuff. That was in 116 degree weather out there. Man, and, it's so beautiful over there. I would love to live out in like Annapolis or across the Bay Bridge. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Oxford is beautiful. East oh Bay man, is beautiful. Oxford. It's so much history. That's where you know Frederick know. Beth is from. Um, but you, you're East, right, man. Easton, that... Easton Talbot, and then and then if you go toward Cambridge, where 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 I'm from, six miles down the road, Harry Tubman was born. So it's like all that stuff was right in the, right in those woods, man. Right in yeah, those swamps man. around there, you know. Yeah. But, um, well, it's, listen. It's good to be with you, man. Um, we've been watching and praying, and uh, even even before I even knew that you were gonna. Even before I knew you were going there, I already knew about that jail because um, they did some documentaries on how bad it was and stuff. So when I saw you were going there, and then how everybody else was checking out, it's like it's like Motel Six. They would check in and check out, but then you didn't check out. I'm like, wait a minute, what the, what the hell is wrong with that? You know, well, um, but. I know you can't talk about certain things, but uh, uh, where are you at right now? Mind, spirit, body, where are you at? Man, I'm 
So, so let me, let me preface it for you. When I found out I was indicted, I was with Jack Brewer and his foundation at a Christian retreat in the uh, uh, Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. And you, um, and you didn't invite me though. You, you <laughs> didn't invite me. Jack, Jack didn't invite me. Okay. I'm going to have well, him on. Okay. Bet, bet. I was a last, I was a last minute thing. Jack and I were talking about some things with his foundation, helping it grow and expand. And so, um, he invited me out. I hopped on a plane real quick. And, you know, the devil tried to prevent me from getting there. It's a mm-hmm. real, I'll, I'll, I can't, I, I don't think I have enough time to like go into the detail of it. But, uh, you know, I was surrounded by young black men who uh, uh, need to be uplifted and be inspired and right. by other black men who've been previously incarcerated. And mm-hmm. I was in the middle of the mountains. I had no signal. And I found out way late in the evening, later than everybody else. And um, I was just, it was just, it was God, man. God Mm -hmm. just had me in the right place to receive the information. And then the people who I was around, uh, some of the special guests that Jack had coming, I I don't want to put anyone's name out there, but Mm -hmm. I was just so, it made me quickly realize how blessed and privileged I was to be as a black man and being in this situation with not only the right. people around me for support, but also the information and knowledge that I have and I'm connected to. And so um, from the very beginning, going into the whole situation, no fear, God has been with me. Okay. I have no fear going to the finish line on this. I, okay. God has a plan. I'm just the instrument, man. So okay. I'm just I'm just highly blessed and favored and thankful that God has decided to uh, you know, y- use me al- along this journey. Gotcha. Hello, Mr. Fort Floyd. Thank you for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. And your uh, sacrifices, if you will, so far. Uh, it's so uh, that's a great attitude. I gotta, I gotta hand it to you. I don't know if I could have handled it that well, uh, but I will say this: the, the I have a, a question. The uh, day that the indictments went out, uh, the media, the leftist media, was really callous about this. I, I, Nicole Wallace sticks in my mind when she's describing this Fulton County Jail. And uh, the events that have been happening lately and how she was just so ecstatic about uh, you folks going in there, especially Donald Trump. And, and I just wondered, since you unfortunately had to stay there longer than most, uh, I wonder what was the what was the feeling with the inmates? With the I, I watched this procession going down in Atlanta, uh, going through a black neighborhood that the jail is in. And it didn't seem like they were all against him. I mean, it seemed like they were supporting this guy. And I wondered in the back of my head, if this guy does get put in this situation, is he going to be a hero or is he going to be uh, a victim? I, I just wondered. That was on my mind, sir. So to the first part of it, you should never be surprised hearing a white liberal uh, being ecstatic about hearing a black <laughs> man, black folks going to jail. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Look at 94 crime bills. Sorry. Biden, like, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and Wayne, you know, you mentioned we knew we know about the jail, but now this is the first time a big spotlight has been put on it. And I'll uh, I'll, I'll answer your question, Hutch, but also say that, um, you know, what is happening right now with President Trump, myself and others, this has been happening to the black community. It's something we've been talking about forever with this yeah. criminal justice reform, this two tier yeah. system where. Yeah. You know, say it again. Say it again. If you can if you can afford it. The difference now is it's happening to white people. Yeah. So we're all we're all Negroes now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're all we're all My black brother. now. And so the but the difference is you're you're, you're only one if you're conservative leaning, right, or, or a patriot, right? So so that that's the big difference. So um, when I went in the I know. so I went in the jail and, uh, they they were getting ready to do my mugshot. And uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I had just done my mugshot. I looked behind me and Mark Meadows is behind me. And he's talking <laughs> to people and, you know, whatever. I'm like, you know, they seem a little bit nicer and nope. to him. Right. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm walking by to go to the back. And uh, this one guy is like sticks his head out and he's like, hey, Trump man, Trump man, I ain't going to lie. You fresh as hell. You, you fresh as hell. <laughs> Because I was wearing, you know what I normally, I, I, I'm, I'm a big sneakerhead. So I had on my blazer, my jacket, my khaki pants, the same thing that I wore when, you know, I came out for the interview and I was wearing my Jordans, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so uh, he was like, you fresh, man, you fresh. And then they were dapping me up as I was walking by. And one dude was like, hey, man, 
call Trump, tell him to get me out of here. Tell, tell him, tell him. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think uh, a big uh, uh, a big error on the district attorney's part is probably putting the black guy who helped raise the black vote for the right. racist president during race rights and a global plant pandemic and, you know, one of the uh, worst and black blackest uh, jails in the country in Fulton County. Yeah, You know, Harrison, it's great to have you on the show. I've been a big fan of yours, so thanks for taking time. And uh, I, I wanted to just explore something you kind of brought up because we try not to go into a ton of race on the show because we think the country should just move past it. Let's just be Americans. But the fact is the African-American community has been treated very poorly by the legal system. Joe and Kamala are probably responsible for more black people being thrown behind bars than anybody. And there's this sense that we get that Trump being charged with all these crimes is going to be a big swing in the African-American male vote, especially as kind of that targeted population. And you've done a ton of outreach with Christian stuff and different things in the African-American community. Do you think that's just a perception, a headline thing? Or do you think that voting block is going to move in meaningful numbers? The voting block was already moving in meaningful numbers. And if you look back to the 2020 election, um, two weeks prior, Joe Biden said that our campaign was overperforming with black males. And I took that, you know, personally, as Michael right. Jordan said <laughs> in his, uh, because it's like, so you're talking, can't you just say I'm doing a good job? Right. And, um, <laughs> but l l let me, so let me, let me give you a different perspective, if you will, about the 2020 election. Joe Biden, according to whoever wants to according to the numbers, received 81 million votes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, more, more than anybody else. Statistically speaking, Joe Biden, in order to win with what we got from the black vote, because we raised, we raised the black vote for President Trump, right? Joe Biden would have had to have gotten more votes from African-Americans than Barack Obama did to win in 2008. So then that begs the question, do you believe that black people in America like Joe Biden more or like Barack Obama more? Right, right, right. right. That's how I, I looked at it. That's how I looked at it. And, and so, you know, that's a part of the problem with the Republican Party. And I saw you guys were talking earlier about, you know, corporate Republicans. We have a horrible job with messaging. We're having a horrible job talking to Main Street and average everyday folks because we don't talk. We don't speak like that. You know, right. when, you, when you break it down like that, like the numbers like, OK, well, which do you think it is it? OK, so then w there had to have been something that went on with the election. What what was it? You know, was it only in one state? Did they take a plan and copy and paste it in multiple states? You know, when you really think about it, you don't have to win the presidency by the popular vote and all these millions of votes. It's a handful of states, a handful of swing states. That's all mm -hmm. it is. And so if you know people. And you've been in the game for a while and you can pick up the phone and call a couple different secretary of states and say, hey, can you do this thing for me? It is, it's possible. Right. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's definitely possible. So to, but to answer your question, man, black folks love President Trump. Come on, man. You yeah, see, exactly. Oh, yeah. You see what time yeah. it is. Um, yeah. Folks are just hating. And uh, but it's it, it is what it is. Yeah. You um, seems like the uh, congressional bug might be like pulling at your your pants leg, man. I mean, what am I hearing that you might be exploring the opportunity to I'm not to might. I, I'm not might. I'm is. Okay. <laughs> it is what it is, man. It do Talk me what it do me. No, you know, I say I say what I mean. I mean when I say I sat in a cell in that cell for a while. I had a lot of time to think and uh I spoke to my wife and you know when I um at the end of the 2020 cycle I started focusing more on business and entrepreneurship because that was something that we were advocating a lot for with the platinum plan. And I'm a type of guy like I'm more practice what I preach. And right. so I started learning about digital businesses and, you know, investing, blockchain technology, AI. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like in that nexus. And, yeah. um, uh, you know, just on a personal note, my wife and I separated towards the end when, you know, Herman passed. I, I had COVID, mm -hmm. I had a two month old baby. And things were just really bad. And so I was, I had closed that chapter in my life, but God put a bookmark in there, right? And said, we're going to pick this up later. 
And so, you know, District Attorney Willis just made me realize, you know, when um, one of my favorite quotes is by Napoleon Bonaparte, there's much sadness in the world, not because of the violence of bad people, but because of the silence of good people. And God has given me uh, these skills and talents and a lot of experience. And so I'm going to put it to good use. You know, if I just remain silent and on the sidelines, then, you know, I can't really uh, argue or complain when I see things not going the right way. Right. So what district, uh, Harrison, and, and what office and how's that going? I mean, if, if that's the road you're going to take, we want to help you. Well, I really, really appreciate that. Um, so I'm exploring right now. I think I, uh, I, I've had a lot of constructive conversations with a lot of great people. Um, I put out a poll on my Twitter asking if folks thought I should uh, primary a rhino or flip a Democrat seat. Rhino. Um, rhino. <laughs> 100%. It's been really interesting. But the, the coolest part about it is, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to say this again. I'm not trying to be preachy, but God is with me. I have seen him moving throughout this entire process. I have zero fear. I know what's going to happen. All I have to do is, you know, walk a righteous path and not sin and cause God to leave me and lose out on these blessings. But I can do whatever I want. We can, let me rephrase that. We can do whatever we want because it's not about me and winning whatever seat isn't about me being the right guy for it. It's about bringing about tangible change and causing a, uh, a more constructive conversation. So we can do whatever we want. Uh, I'm just blessed to be around good people who we're trying to figure out what exactly that uh, might look like when we decide to pull the trigger. So uh, Hutch, just to, you know, not, not to, you know, be too much of a politician and beat around the bush and not answer your question. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm seriously considering probably about that we're looking at three different spots. Okay. Um that that just totally makes sense that I have a connection to um already in Georgia. I've already ran previously. Um so one of them already, I guess you guys would know Georgia seven, right? Like I previously mm -hmm. ran there, seriously looking about looking at going there. But then there's two other interesting ones. So um, you know, we'll we will we'll see what God um Okay. It's it's what God decides. That's 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 the direction I'm, I'm going in. I, I got to say, just uh, my two cents on that. I think us on the show, especially in our audience, is really very much about we need to get rid of the rhinos in the party before we worry about going after Democrats. President Trump wasn't derailed because of Democrats in 2016. It was because of complicity of the Republican Party. You're, you're, uh, you're right. You're right. But, but on, I, oh, go ahead. If, if I can quickly. Uh, Rob, um, I'm in a very unique, God has blessed me to be in a very unique position. All right. So I can stand in the middle of the aisle of Congress and look to the right to Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and say, be quiet because you can't out MAGA me because I'm the black Trump guy. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. Right. Yeah. I can look yeah. over to the left to AOC, Elon Omar, and Corey Bush and say, you know, be quiet. You can't out victim me because I'm a black man. I was thrown <laughs> in jail unjustly. Right. right? You know, like I, I, I do that too. So there's nobody in Congress who, or there's nobody who can, can come into the Congress like me and say, all right, everybody, let's huddle up. We disagree on this stuff, but let's try to bring about some change with the stuff that we actually agree on. So I hear what you, I hear and I agree with what a lot of people are saying that the rhinos are problems. Um, I agree with that. A part of me does think that they need to go, but another part of me says, well, why not just be the guy on the same side to thump them over the head or tap them on the butt and say, get over here, man. You, you know better than that. Act right. Well, I'll tell you, just be careful of the Georgia GOP, Harrison. <laughs> Right. I'm not afraid of the Georgia GOP. I didn't say, be, I didn't say be, to me, Hutch. I didn't what say what be afraid of them. I just said beware. Hey, beware of what? what they they can't handle me. Gotcha. I am ungovernable. No, I no. am my own man. I am a critical thinker. And you know what else I am, Hutch? That they're not in the Georgia GOP. I'm presidential. No, I've no. worked at a national level. I've worked at where they are trying to get to. Okay. If they had the right answer. They would have fixed this and we wouldn't be in this mess in the first place if right. they had the right answer. OK, so they got one of three options. They're going to either stay out the way and give me this congressional seat that God wants me to have. 
They're going to cheat and take it from me and expose themselves, right? And everyone's going to see it. Or they're going to try to do to me what they do to other black folks, kill, lynch, mysterious accident, whatever. But that's only going to further <laughs> expose, you know, the truth that I am speaking because it's coming from God. So what is the Georgia GO? The Georgia GOP needs to do one thing. They need to call me and say, hey, we need your help in getting right because we're all over the place and we need to fix this. That's the best thing for us to do as a nation and a country is instead of allowing these different factions and parties and tribalism and hyperpartisanship to tear us apart, is to get it together and say, all right, we need to bring it all in. We, we, we need to remember we're a family. We're Americans first, right? So let's let's get that together. So I'm not I'm not being aware of anything. We're all family. We're going to bring it in. Sometimes family fight and squabble and we're going to disagree. But when we leave the house, we should all be on one accord, right? So I'm not afraid of them and they shouldn't be afraid of me unless they decide to not walk the righteous path and they want to get in front of God and do the wrong thing. Then they, they don't need to be afraid of me. They need to be afraid of God. And for the you record, know, Harrison Floyd is not feeling suicidal. He has had his no, car no, inspected, no. so tip there's top. no brake line leaks. Tip top <laughs> state. Tip top. Tip top. He's at tip top. I'm in tip top um, state. Yeah, I'm good to go. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 so blessed and fortunate to be in this position. We're this it's it's time for a new Republican Party. We need to get back to the yeah, way that yes. we were. You know, uh, Hutch, you mentioned you know the issue of race. It's a hard conversation. You know, it's not a thing that we feel good about discussing. But if we act like it's not there, then what's going to happen? We're just going to allow this problem to continue to germinate and populate and continue to exist. So we we need to have these tough conversations. And if nobody else wants to speak up and tell the truth and have it, then I'll do it for you. But if you're not going to do it, then you need to be quiet, stand to the side, or follow and get behind. Right? Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah you need to you need to tell MG, MTG that immediately. Listen, um, I want to have you. Well, we want to have you back as soon as possible. So I'll be talking to you behind the scenes. But know this: whatever you need from me, whatever you need from us. Just let us know, okay? We want to we want to get your message out there, and we want to get you out there because we need you in Congress. Uh, Pastor Scott said. Pastor Scott said a while back. He said, you know, we need some pepper with that salt going in there. So, um, I mean, we, we um, I mean, I'm glad that. I mean, I can already see that God is working through you right now. So, I mean, I I I really appreciate you coming on the show, and um, the lane is open between us now so uh let's get it going man let's get, get it going. back on the lane has always been open between us uh wayne and i i do want to say publicly um you know when we were talking on the trump campaign i wish i was able to work with you more i think we could have used your voice um Thank more you. and it would have been great and a blessing um but unfortunately you know a kind of campaign is like trying to build a plane while you're trying to take off and things just didn't work out the way that it did. But I appreciate you keeping um, in touch with me. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support. Um, Hutch and Rob, is so great speaking with you. Um, thank, thank you, everybody out there who donated to the Defense Fund um, for me. I really, really appreciate that. And um, praise God, it's not too late for all of that. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Harrison Floyd, you can check him out. Um, GibsonGo.com that is the that's the website for your gifts and go correct official underscore harrison underscore fund you can give to uh harrison and um man i man i feel so good talking to you today we got to have you back and um again i'm I, i'm just glad i know you so uh that's it we're going to take a break here and here on red voice media network we'll be right back Attention Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled, it won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared, this may catch many off guard. Your hard earned assets are in jeopardy. 
but there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe cusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks America! All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Wayne Dupree Show here on the Red Voice Media Network. That's right, the, the top conservative network out there that you will be hearing more about. You can watch us on Apple. You can watch us on Amazon Prime. You can watch us on Roku. You can download us. Actually, you can go to the website at redvoicemedia.com and sign in. Um, you can join their premium. Use your code name Wayne, but you can uh, um, get extra uh, interviews and extras. All then like that, we want to say, Thank you for Red Voice Media. We broadcast here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday between 12 and 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Whew, that was something. Let me introduce the godfather of conservative radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. And also, Mr. J-Rod from Muslim Soda. Hey, 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 folks. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm excited for Roy. Look at that hoodie he's got today. He's you know like what? a you know fashion what? plate, going baby. Off, man. He's showing off, man. That you know that hoodie is bad. He's showing off. He's That's gonna bad. have a hat by Friday, by, by Thursday. <laughs> sunglasses, pipe. Yeah, right. I look, I look. I'm wearing this button down shirt, and he go. He gonna come on there with with. Oh man, that is a bad hoodie. <laughs> God, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Jeez. Yeah, like that. Okay. Well, one of right. the reasons why I want to wear this is because this is from gfashion.com and the brand, uh, Miles Square created this, the whole brand and created this collection called uh, Buddha, uh, Buddha Collection. So yeah. it represents kind of like Chinese people's, you know, belief and religion, That's right. That's uh, nice. which, versus, uh, which is opposite of what CCP is trying to let people know that uh, the Chinese people actually they are uh, religious they are like they have they believe in god and they believe in you know karma and reincarnation and that's the whole reason i think why miles created this uh, whole you know fashion line and you know this whole like collection right we also have collection of you know um it's called um antidote collection where you have like avermectin artemisinin hydroxychloroquine printed on shirts and printed on, on hoodie that explains that's awesome. to the world that those are the antidotes what? <laughs> well, now, uh, what, uh, what is it? What is the website that I want to make sure that I get that up there for you? Was that G Fashion? Did you say? Yes, it's G. It's called GFashion.com. I want to make sure that I get that for you. How you been doing, man? Good. How are you guys? Good. Listen, um, uh, Roy, Roy, Roy joins us each week. We talk about um, certain things. Uh, um, dealing with the National Federation of China um, and their fight to take down the CCP. Uh, they have a whole lot, a lot, they have a great bench. You know, their bench is better than the Republican <laughs> bench, to tell you the truth. Um, and I mean, I, I bet that y'all agree with me there. I mean, you know, they, they just keep bringing people that expose stuff 
from you know the the new the new federal state of China, where the GOP they don't have a bench, they don't have a bench behind Donald Trump. But um, I've been noticing, I'm, I, well, I've been noticing a whole lot of stuff about G, um, G Papa G. I, I mean, I see that he isn't going to, he's not going to attend the G twenty summit. Is is that a health thing too? Well, I think I think it definitely sent a huge signal to the West, especially to the United States. I think yesterday uh, the pre- president um, of the United States also um, said something about it. But I think it sent a really um, you know big signal to the West that um, it's it, he attended to like you know the BRICS summit, which the core idea is about de-dollarization, the RMB. You know uh, hegemony like the RMB uh, internationalization and um, working on formulate this you know new uh, center of the whole world which represent half of the world population and uh, but he's not attending you know a G20 um, that's that's one signal that's one big political signal s- sending to the whole world that uh, it's a uh, working on it's like formulation of uh, you know uh, the evil axis the new uh, axis of evil. And also, you're right, uh, when uh, she has a huge problem with his uh, own health. And if you look at like how um, often he traveled after he like released the virus, like after the uh, pandemic, it's uh, it reduced uh, dramatically, right? Like for two years, I think he never traveled no. from I think yeah. 2020 to, to 2022. And after that, he only traveled to like a couple of countries. And then he went to Saudi Arabia at the end of 2022. And he also changed just like this time, just like during the BRICS summit, we talked about like he changed his agenda. He changed his trip uh, like a lot. Uh, like all of a sudden he didn't like really uh, appear in some really important meetings at the opening. And also like back then, he also changed his trips, I think from 70 days to 50 days and miles the founder of a new federal state of China was the first and only one who told the world that like why why it's happening and what what's happening right because he has the top intelligence on the CCP and I believe the whole reasons are uh, two things first he has a really uh, he he has a big issue with his health and also he's afraid he's afraid of any kind of uh, mutiny and or coup like it could happen to him and now like inside China inside CCP. Um, Wang Qishan, the former vice president, also like his faction also accounts for 50 percent of the political power. And they were looking to, you know, any opportunities could like, you know, take Xi out and, you know, take over the power. Because if if he doesn't do that, like he, he could be taken out by Xi if, uh, like any time. That's the nature of, you know, extreme communism. And that's the nature of the political struggle uh, in a communist country. Like you got disappeared, you got, uh, you know, sacrificed, you got, you got uh, suicided, right? You got arrested, uh, disappeared, uh, like if you lose the uh, political, you know, struggle. And I, I believe we are having this important conversation right now, like uh, is America is uh, speeding towards that. Right, right. Yes, we are. <clears throat> I'll tell you, and, and a lot of those coups do happen when the leader's out of town. Yeah. Out of the, <laughs> that's yes. something, but. Uh, you know, the United States has basically two uh, two borders with, with other countries. You have Mexico and Canada to the north. China is a lot more, mainland China is a lot more complicated than that. They've got numerous neighbors to their north, Mongolia, and then especially to the west, where all the Eastern European, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, a new map uh, has been published recently. Roy, uh, explain how that's uh, kind of heating up international tensions between China and its neighbors. Yeah, like apart from what I said about like the BRICS and she is not attending G20. And now like they just released this new map, uh, like they replace um, the nine dash line, which is not agreed uh, with a lot of other nations. But now it's like 10 dash line. And also, it's claiming like part of the uh, part of India and also part of uh, you know South China Sea um, and also part of Russia, I think, uh, which is actually ridiculous because uh, because I see it more like an internal propaganda. 
uh, right? Because like every time there's a huge uh, struggle or tension, like inside China, they all they always divert the conflict outside, right? And then to stir up this kind of uh, nation nationalism, you know, um, pride or uh, hysteria, where we also saw a lot, like in like United States recent years. But it's I, I think it's all propaganda to just you know make people seem more you know proud of their own you, you know nation or whatever and ccp is trying to stir up this hatred towards the like outside toward other nations towards united states um and to just cover up its own you know vulnerability where its economy is collapsing like over 200 million young people are unemployed which is a huge element of instability um so that's what CCP does, and CCP has been doing this uh, to the Chinese people for 70 years, over 70 years. And but now I think the, the Chinese people are not buying it. That's why they've been saying um, like things like we are the we are the last generation, or we're gonna like uh, stay like uh, lay flat and not being enslaved, not being fooled by the uh, current government, the CCP regime. They they, they refuse to become like the expectation of like their uh, like of their family or their parents or their, their social expectation they're not going to meet it they're just not going to be working for the chinese communist party they they refuse to continue to contribute to this regime uh, where like they spend like 30 years just to like uh, put all the money in a small box and they invest it not even theirs so it's only 70 years of they rented a place and then they couldn't afford the, the increasing rent or increasing like housing, uh, like increasing, you know, everything like the uh, the prices of and now like China is ex experiencing a deflation, but still like people cannot afford a lot of things and they just decide not to work for it. So I think it's just a, it's just a show. It's just a, just a flexing the muscles and, you know, uh, to the West and to the neighbors, like always they're, they're trying, trying to bully Lots of, uh, you know, uh, Malaysia, like Indonesia, Taiwan, of course. Now, like this, you, you see this map also include Taiwan in there. Um, it, mm -hmm. I think it's just propaganda. You know, it's it's funny you say that. And I always like to make the comparison we have you on how what you see in China is what they're doing in America, just a different version. And we talk a lot about distraction where they throw up the bright, shiny object for everybody to look at. Meanwhile, they're taking advantage of things. And that's what I see going on in China. Uh, but kind of an extension of that, you mentioned Xi's having health problems. The population is really unsettled. There's there's a lot of things, and we could be looking at a regime change. And I was doing some digging in, and the people behind Xi who could take over power, and you had mentioned a couple of them, they look worse than him. Or do I have that wrong? Well, definitely. I mean, like the vice, uh, the the former vice president Wang Qishan was one of the biggest, you know, kleptocrats in Chinese history, right? And and also like his faction, like oh, look, like those those people are all the uh, kleptocrats who've been stealing money from Chinese people and American people the whole time. And uh, Wang Qishan was kind of he he has more of like the financial uh, connections and the international connections with uh, the Wall Street and, and the West, which she doesn't have. Uh, so that's why he's kind of more connected, more powerful. And he's been controlling the, the finance, the financial like part of, uh, of the whole regime. Um, but uh, they're the same. And also like we saw she's like she's ending is kind of like certain like he's gonna he's gonna die like right he's gonna be killed or he's right. gonna die from illness but one of the most important things we need to prevent is like another she or another person like you said worse than right. she came came over and then uh took take over power and then even like uh, in disguise of uh freedom like of uh you know democracy and they're still they're, they're kleptocrats so um I think uh, the, the the principles were written in the Declaration of New Federal State of China, that we need to ensure there there is one person, one vote for all the Chinese people, and uh, people need to there, there need to, to be a referendum to decide like if uh, they want to be independent or if they want they don't want to be independent. Like Taiwan people from Taiwan, like uh, Cantonese people, you know, um, Uyghurs. 
um, Tibetans, uh, all, all of those people, they need to have their own rights and uh, vote for themselves. And I think New Federal Civil China uh, has a, you know, a responsibility to ensure that it's happened, it will happen that way. And also the $25 trillion stolen by the kleptocrats needs to be returned to the Chinese people. And there need to be a like permanent, you know, uh, peace agreement with, between Chinese people and the West. Um, and, you know, it's all written in uh, uh, like the declaration of new federal state of China. Uh, people can go to nfscofficial.com and take a look. And we believe like the new federal state of China would be the only one who represent the Chinese people to have a like dialogue with the West after CCP collapse. Right. Do you think, um, do you think G, um, G, well, yeah. Do you think um, G understands that his time, like, especially with the real estate situation that's going on over there? And we, I mean, America is so connected to that. I don't think Americans really know that if that happens over there in China, that's going to affect us big time. Uh, do do you think Xi knows that his time? Well, do do you think Xi's time is short? Do you think, with everything that's happening right now, can you say with surety that his time is short, or is it getting short, or do you have uh, like maybe next five years, ten years, something like that? No, I think definitely CCP does not have like five, 10 years, let okay. alone she, like I think she's gonna uh, be finished very soon because like he, like inside party now, like people has been calling, not calling the Chinese Communist Party, they're calling him like the she's party, right? Uh, after mm -hmm. he changed the constitution, after he purged, you know, like millions of families. And also those people, probably those, uh, some of them, they're really bad, like Wang Qishan or Meng Jianzhu, right? But still, the, their their enemies, they're, they're, they they would hope she uh, being killed and then like the the system being gone. And uh, I think most of the like ninety nine percent of the CCP members, they just hope this regime is gone. They're just waiting for the opportunities, and they're waiting for a, a like a, a decouple between U.S. and and Chinese Communist Party. So see, the CCP cannot last uh, long. Like if this if, like after. America let's just cut off the technological and financial support for for the CCP. And yesterday was Labor Day, and we posted we posted a tweet. Uh, we said like Happy Labor Day. Like all the like seven trillion dollars investing in the CCP is is generated by the working class. It's generated by the hardworking people, right from the United States. Like all the deplorables here, all the people you know, watching your shows and being like uh, just, uh, grinding like throughout the year. Um, and being like, they're 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 kind of nobody. Like nobody's mentioning them, but they generated the seven trillion dollars, and those those the, the money uh, are invested in uh, Chinese market, invested in the CCP. The CCP has been like um, stolen all those money and uh, use it against American people and Chinese people, right? So you can you can think of like now, now like uh, CCP doesn't have really a long time. I think by by the end of next year. 2020 uh, let, miles always been talking about this like 2020 for 2025 that's kind of the deadline for the ccp as a whole all right let's uh <clears throat> just regroup a little bit because we always get new viewers uh, there's probably a lot of people watching right now this is the first time they've ever watched the show uh roy guo new federal state of china explain what that is and, and its origins and its mission sir for the new viewers so uh, we're a group of Chinese dissidents. Uh, we're the opposite of Chinese Communist Party. Uh, our, our goal and our only goal is to take down the Chinese Communist Party. We're the new, uh, whistleblower movement and new federal state of China founded by uh, Miles Guo, who's being arrested and uh, held in MDC, New York, uh, for speaking out. But we'll continue. We'll continue to fight. We'll continue to fight the infiltration from the CCP into the uh, United States. And we will together. We'll take down the CCP and uh, save China and America. You know, and it's uh, that that's a great call out, just especially for new viewers. We always get a bunch of new viewers on social media, and it's important for folks tuning in for the first time to understand the in China 
average Chinese citizen, we're probably just like they are. They just want to go to church, practice their faith, raise their kids, eat dinner, have a little fun, have a barbecue. The Communist Party, though, that runs their corrupt, corrupt government that runs them, they, they're they the ones trying to take down America and take over the world. Um, one point that you always make really well, Roy, is how we just need to decouple from the Communist Party of China and then it collapses on itself because right now, you know, they rely on us for their money, basically. Without us, they're, they're nothing. Could you kind of expand for the viewers, like, what that means or what should we be pushing our politicians to do or, or the different companies that we're associated with in America? How can we help? Yeah, like, I think one most important thing is to spread the words and to um, bring the awareness. I think uh, our audience from uh, Wayne Dupree podcast is already um, <laughs> gaining a lot of uh, knowledge and, you know, and people are being enlightened, people are being taught and people are being like, uh, people understand, right? And also like we've been uh, making those translated clips, probably uh, when you've already seen that on Twitter and on Getter, uh, we, mm -hmm. we sent those in China and there are more people. There are more people like believing this. More people like uh, sharing it. More people like, being a, a you know force multiplier. You know, uh, we have hundreds of millions of Chinese people just agree with us. They, they don't. They don't really support Chinese Communist Party. Nobody supports Chinese Communist Party. Um, that's why she's like always disappearing and, and arresting people around him because uh, now <laughs> he's looking for wh whoever's not supporting <laughs> like us or right. uh, are still supporting the Chinese Communist Party. So um, I think the, the most important thing is to bring the awareness, share um, Wayne Dupree uh, podcast, share, you know, nfscofficial.com, the website, and also NFSC Speaks on Twitter and Getter. Just share those with uh, your friends, your family, your neighbors uh, online. And uh, I think together, like very soon, because I think American people, like you said, um, Jay, like American people, just like Chinese people, they're, they're kind, they're, uh, you know, hardworking, they're smart. Uh, they just lack information. People are not yep. stupid, right? The people, people like if they get the right information, if they get the right intelligence, they, they have logic. They they can just think for themselves and have independent, like critical thinking. They will, they will understand. They will know, and they will know. They will know what's right and what's wrong. They will understand what happened uh, in the past, and all those shenanigans, all those coincidences. They're not so coincidence. Uh, right, so there, there's something behind it, and once they get the information, once they get get the knowledge, uh, they will choose the right side. You know, we we're seeing right now. Uh, before um, before I let you go, we're seeing right now that uh, the United States wants to start pushing another variant of COVID again. Um, is is that what is happening over there in China too, or is it that just here in the United States right now? Well, um, I think lots of people are getting ill as well. Uh, in a couple of cities, uh, we saw it on the news, like people have been lining up in hospitals um, and uh, lots of Chinese. But it happened all the time. R look, uh, when when she ha ha was having an internal meeting with the CCP officials and people has been reporting back to him saying, oh, look, now uh, United States is uh, having a lockdown and uh, people are dying and they're being prepared and whatever. That, that's the during the worst time of the uh, pandemic um and she she was she was kind of unhappy and she said um if if like chinese people it, still like safe and if chinese people are not injured and not dying how can we uh convince the west how can we convince america that this is a global pandemic and how do we uh, make them not suspecting not like being uh you know um feeling weird about like china is doing good and maybe they will think that the virus we released the virus and we have to have chinese people dying as well that's literally what she said so 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 that's that's how like the propaganda being uh, doing the opposite like uh, kidnapping the chinese people and making people around the world and like, governments around the world thinking that like uh, China is uh, CCP represent China. No, CCP does not represent Chinese people's interests. CCP is the, is the enemy of Chinese people because mm -hmm. to, to, make, to make him feel safe and to make the regime more stable, he, he will kill like people. He will kill the people in Wuhan first. And, like 1.6 million people died in the first three months in Wuhan, like uh, after 
uh, the breakout. And that's he crazy. just felt uh, that's probably a good thing because um, you, you look, uh, it makes an image uh, looks like Chinese people are dying as well. Chinese people are suffering. So we're fighting this together. We're like facing this challenges together. <laughs> but I tell you this, Roy, thank you. Thank you. And um, <laughs> I just I just love when I see y'all because um, that lets me know that y'all are still doing the right thing. You're still getting your message out. And when I say you, that, that, that you're getting your message out is that I see more and more people that are sharing stuff about what y'all are doing. They're sharing your videos in, in like big, huge now. I mean, I'm like, wow, look at, look at the way that, um, you know, look at the way that they're uh, um, breaking it down. They're cutting those videos together. And then you see them on Getter, you see them on Twitter, you see them on Instagram. You see, you see these, and I'm like, wow, they're growing. That I mean, that's that's. I mean, they're growing. Y'all, y'all, y'all are doing it. You know, um, and that I mean, I admire you. I I, I admire you uh, more more than what you know. Uh, give our audience uh, a, a parting shot before we let you go. Yes, uh, please uh, go follow us uh, at nfscofficial.com and also at NFSC Speaks on Getter and Twitter. And I also want to say, Wayne, like it's uh, you've been helping a lot. You've been very helpful to get those words out. And without you, we cannot achieve this. Oh, well, I mean, thank you so much. We, all we are is a cart. Y'all are the product. <laughs> Y'all are the product. And I mean, I mean, honestly, it's almost like it's almost like um, it's almost like taking you out of town. We we are your we are sh uh, chauffeur chauffeur sh Sh chauffeuring. We are chauffeuring you out of town and waiting for y'all, but watching y'all and just smiling because y'all are getting out and y'all are just knocking it dead. So you know that's that's. That's something that we're happy with and you know we we will give time as long as everybody is understanding what y'all are doing and they're getting informed and they're on board that's a winning combination that's just straight up winning combination so um we're gonna see you later i want to thank you for here on rare voice media network roy guo j ride from muslim soda the Godfather from Places Unknown and also Thank You yeah, Free. <laughs> we'll see we'll see you right after the break. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, Thanks America! We interrupt today's programming to bring unfortunate news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. So take action now. The Federal Reserve's phased deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard and put your hard-earned assets in jeopardy. But here's the good news. There's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Speak to someone at American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Dial 833, the number 2 USA Gold. Yes, call now, 833 287 
This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Call 833, the number two USA Gold. Yes, call now. 833-287-2465. Act swiftly. 833-287-2465. Damn. It's all oh, messed man. up. <laughs> <laughs> that Everything's happened, right? weird. I'm like, I don't know if it's my internet or theirs. You know what's crazy too? It's like I I didn't expect that. I was like, God damn it, I mean, whoa, whoa, what? I was getting ready to say, yo, people, I love you. And then I was like, wait a minute, everybody's way off. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We are back. Did, well, you have you have the best god darn conservative voices. Right here, right now, in front of you. Okay, this is it. This, 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 we've been here for about twelve years, going. Okay, we are going to give you what you need. Period. Bar none. I mean, I'm feeling good right now. We're getting sweet <laughs> interviews right now. <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking about this during the break. Actually, a little before the break. What if the CCP falls, man? We get some credit for that. Hey, hey, why not? I mean, think about that. That's huge. Yeah, it is huge. It is huge. It is huge. I gotta say, we're just sitting in sitting in historic times too. Whatever's gonna end up with Russia and Ukraine, what whatever's going on in the CCP, BRICS. I mean, they they always say like maybe curse to live in boring times. We certainly do not live in boring times, no. and not to mention all the craziness in America. And we're getting better at it, man. If you guys think about this, we're getting better at it. Yeah. We had the Ukraine war down on the first day. Yep. We figured yeah. out the supply chain problems on the first week. Yep. And, and the fertilizer problems. And now, the same day it comes out, everybody says those KKK people are feds, and we know it. And they got names and places of birth and everything else. They, they We're getting better at this. I got to say, for those who didn't see it this weekend, shout out to friend of the show, Laura Loomer. There was there was real Nazis, supposedly, that were protesting in Florida this weekend. Laura drove over there. She identified them, and she showed how they have ties to Ukraine and the Azov Battalion, and there's feds in there, and it's a partridge in a pear tree. But, yeah, people are starting to wake up. There was another guy. That was that was photographed with QAnon shaman on January yep. 6th that ended up being a Ukrainian spy for Christ's sake. A spy yep. that went up to get a selfie just so we could have that picture with the two together. And he's busted. Now they got pictures of him shaking hands with McCain and, and Lindsey Graham in Ukraine. Hey, and as a Minnesotan, Amy Klobuchar had him in Minnesota. Like he was here for something. I don't even know what he was here for. For God's sake. It's unreal that the United States government collaborating with Nazis. That's where we're at. To every one of you Republicans that asked for one dollar right. for Nazi Germany, that's what you did. You might as well say it. Come out and, and admit it. And these aren't Nazis like they call us Nazis. These are like the real thing they believe in Adolf Hitler. They they just read their tattoos. Ukraine, that Azov battalion, like they've got the swastika tattoos. Like those guys are, they're serious. It looks like an updated swastika too. Yeah, right? it's, from their, what I know. it's their own little version of it. Right? Yeah, sure. But you know, we told y'all that. We told y'all that. I mean, I, I mean, again, that's why I say we've been here. We haven't, we haven't gone anywhere. And I know um, I got frustrated over the weekend, and I said some stuff on my Twitter account uh, about my Twitter account um, because so many people are like, you know, I'm just seeing you. I haven't seen you for four or five years. You know, you know, it, it's like, we've been here. We've been here. We've been here. You know, don't, don't tell me that it's don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Don't tell me that Twitter's fixed. Okay. Don't, don't do that. I said, <laughs> I told y'all, I told y'all months ago, Y'all falling in love with Elon Christ or uh, G- Jesus Musk, whatever whatever you want to call him. Y- y'all are falling Elon, in love e- with this guy. Elon of Nazareth. 
<laughs> yeah, he's he's turning he's turning water into um into uh, vitamin E. But either way, either way, I told y'all it's he's not what you think. And now and now I'm seeing someone on our side. Hey, I this is this is just as bad as Twitter one. Wait till the election. Right. It's just getting started. Is this a setup? Was it was Elon a setup from the beginning to get people back in? Probably. I think, I think you know I, I think more importantly, Elon Elon just figured out that the government I that that he has to pay homage to the government. Okay. The government is cracking down or or they only let him go so far. You know, they brought him in basically, okay, we see you over there with China. We see you being going in there like Rome. Okay, that's fine. But understand, you still have to do stuff the way that we want you to do stuff over here. Look, FBI, CIA, DHS, they all they still got offices at uh, either San Francisco or New York or wherever those Twitter offices are. And and if they don't, they got hotlines. And the other they thing is when he's down 60% in ad revenue. He's got financial problems, and he's bringing back people back in to to uh, censor content <laughs> and whatnot. He's it's blaming kind of... it, and he's blaming it on the ADL. Yeah. And, uh, and l- listen, first off, I am not a supporter of the ADL. I don't. I mean, I I don't even follow him like that because you know they don't bother me. I've already I've already been blocked by the NAACP, so whatever. But. He's blaming the loss of money and revenue on ADL. Well, some of the people that are on Twitter is where the ADL is getting all their stuff from, and they're using it as examples. If you go to court and <laughs> if you go to court and the ADL walks in there with 40, 40, uh, 40 boxes and they start that, that. that Alan Dershowitz. That, right. <laughs> that, and Nazi Ukraine, they got an account and right here. All, all they got to do is that. I was like, dude, the problem is you should have just did a clean slate. That's what I said at the beginning. Just do a clean slate. Cut all that code. Get all that code off and start all over again. Oh, um, uh, What's that? What's that one that's doing it right now? Parlor. Parlor is doing it. Parlor's offline though, but Parlor's doing it. They're starting from the beginning. You know, he's you know, I think I think the Twitter thing brings up two important learnings, hopefully, for our audience and everybody. And one, it shows how advertisers control messaging because the 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 whole Twitter thing yeah. and even the Facebook story. Is these companies, the advertise po- advertisers or politicians put pressure on advertisers? Yep. Advertisers say if you want to share content, you can't, like we won't monetize it. So so your corporations are actually part of the censorship. And it's not just that they can come out and say, You can't say that. They'll just come out and say, We're not gonna help you make any money if you say right. that, which well, is we're not gonna lend you any money. Right. right. Or we're not going to get you any money. The second thing, though, that I think the real danger is with Elon, whatever you think of what he's done, is it's shown how fragile the regime is. Because if you go back a year or two ago, folks like us three were out there screaming and like, how are you not paying attention? How are you not doing this? And just by having whatever freedom we've had to communicate what's really going on with audiences, you see how the nationwide like people are starting to wake up, you know, and I told you the story of a couple of weeks ago, one of my buddies who I'll be meeting up with him this afternoon. He's like, is this Hunter Biden thing real? Like, I'm starting to see it on Twitter and you've been talking about it. I mean, like, yeah, dude, we've been talking about it for like four years. Like, where you been? But we were relegated before to, you know, Reddit or 4chan message boards or you just couldn't say it. Now, that is one thing Twitter's let happen is as some of that truth gets out, people are like, whoa. This is really happening. But you know what? Then you have to go to the FBI and CIA, and you're like, okay, so why are y'all letting it happen? Because they're trying to get rid of Biden. 
Now, if 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 they wanted to keep Biden, they wouldn't have let all that stuff come out of. Oh right. Him. They're trying. Yeah. They're trying to get rid of him to put somebody else in there. Uh, you know what they're going to do? <laughs> if you look at what they're wanting to do, we got an election coming up, so we got to get COVID, right. Got to get yeah. COVID back in, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're starting to sacrifice people, man. Yep. yep. I see Joe Biden got it. Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg has it for the third time. I mean, what if Joe gets it? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, even had BLM protests are back, boys. I don't know if you knew it was yeah, BLM yeah. season in Ohio. Sure. You know. Right? Right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, BLM. We we're the only country I know. That um, Black Lives Matter is ninety percent white, right? <laughs> and it's only on election year. It's only on election year. It's a- I'm glad you said that because I was watching videos from Ohio, and there was a tragic shooting. Somebody tried to run over a cop. They shot her. You can check the story out online. But all the BLM people out there were white liberals, <laughs> and I'm like, there's no, there's no brothers in that ugly, crowd, ugly, man. Ugly, yeah. ugly white liberals, right? Yeah. Look, not, I not was looking at. People. I was looking at that um, that lawsuit in Pennsylvania uh, that came down a couple months ago. That uh, the BLM members that won a oh, million dollar, yeah, they're white people. They, I mean, right. <laughs> they got pepper sprayed or something or, or, or whatnot. <laughs> I was like, what? that was a BLM protest. They took them to court and won. Well, we're living in bizarro world, Wayne. So. You know, for a long time, we had women's lib stuff, right? Where it was like mm-hmm. fighting for women power. Now, that's why all taken over by dudes in dresses. Like, yeah, they've no, gone no. over and taken over all the women's stuff. So the women, like the, the single crazy white women are like, what do I got to do? Well, I got to go take over the black people's stuff. <laughs> so they're just going over there and yeah. <laughs> you need to stay home. You know what, too? You know what, too? Um, who was it? Uh, Kyle Becker. Kyle Becker put... Um, put this thing up uh, about he, he might have been playing I'm not sure he might have been playing but he said a video came from January 6th but it was actually the night that um, after Donald Trump got sworn in into office remember uh, um, Antifa and all of them were at the gates and they were beating up the social um, um, on the secret service Yep. that night well um uh, Kyle Becker was like BLM is out here and and but but the video if you look up and down that line it looked like 40 white people just, I mean just oh, yeah. pull it pulling the gate pulling the gate I'm like man only in America only in America can can and 40 white people be called BLM and and now and I know that my boys are gonna agree with me on this one all those people they talk about insurrection. What, 30, 40 Secret Service people were hurt that night? Were hurt. They injured. had to take the president underground. Well, you know, he said he he said he was. Well, what's, what's funny, <laughs> too? <laughs> like, I wasn't underground. Don't tell, don't tell nobody I was underground. No. So, but hold on, hold on. <clears throat> 30, 30 to 40 Secret Service people were hurt. All those people were out there. Church burned. And Republicans... Didn't do, didn't do a damn thing. Didn't di- didn't J six him. Didn't put him in jail. Didn't, didn't, didn't do Mark hearings. Mellon. Nope. No nope. hearings. No nothing. It's like, you know, this is an important fact, and I like when we bring stuff like this up because we I talk about my opinion. the The media is the single biggest detriment to the company or to the country. I, I think I, I think they're filtering of messaging, especially for normies. We talk about the normies, but we're talking about those riots that were happening at the White House. They were tearing down gates. They burned down a church by any measure other than the disruption on January 6th of the congressional proceedings, which was a delay. It was just a delay of a congressional thing. The and it was riot, done by Congress. Them, it wasn't done by rioters. It was done by Congress. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. By any measure other than that disruption, the the riots that happened on BLM at the White House and down there were signif- were a hundred times more violent, more damaging, worse than what happened on January sixth. 
But if you go back and watch and just get on YouTube and go look at the clips, the the mainstream media was calling Trump bunker boy. Oh, look at Bunker Boy. Yeah, he yeah, had to hide yeah. in the basement. Just go yeah. search Bunker Boy. You're going to find a million memes. You're going to yeah. find freaking CNN, yeah. MSNBC. So there was enough of a threat of this crowd that the Secret Service looked at the president and goes, dude, we got to go in the bunker. Whether or not yeah. he went in the bunker and yeah. or not, like that's a different story. But you were like, you were like I ain't going to bunker. Well, but what I'm saying okay. is, is right. they thought that it was violent enough that the president of the U.S. had to go hide in a bunker. Yeah. And instead of the media going, holy crap, we've gone too far. Arrest yeah. all these people. These folks should all yeah. be thrown in jail. They, they made fun of President yeah. Trump. Sure and if you yep. go up to any lefty yeah. and just go, hey, do you remember Bunker Boy? They're going to look at you go, oh, God, that was so funny. Can you believe it? Trump yeah. hid in the bunker? And that's yeah. the same person that thinks grandma walking around the Capitol was like going to overthrow the government with her flag. It's it's insane what the media did to brainwash people. Let me just throw some whipped cream on the top of that. If you look at what <laughs> happened after the after January 6 happened, you look at our staunch rock-ribbed conservative senators and house members in the Republican party. They called us terrorists, they called us insurrectionists. They didn't say a damn word about those people uh in the summer of 2020. Not they a did. damn word. Well, and think of that. There was enough violence. The president had to go go into a bunker. There was that, that, and not that one worked. people, not one person spent one goddamn night in jail. That's what like, I'm talking think about. Think of that. It was a worse. They theirs was worse than what J six was. Way worse. If you look at Way worse. The injuries. If you look at that, and they all got away with it. That's the thing. They all went back to their hotels that night. Even the, even the inauguration day, they were lighting limousines on fire and things like that. Sure did, sure did, sure did. They got but, everybody up the street, and they were uh, uh, destroying Starbucks in DC and 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 lighting that limousine on fire, just like you said. Had had people um, the next week had people marching to DC, um, saying they were going to blow up blow up the White House. Madonna and Rand Paul uh, almost got freaking killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On his own lawn. Yeah. Yeah. No, in Washington. In DC, there was video of them coming in after him and his wife. And the it cop was protect, the cop protected him with his 10 speed with right. his bicycle. Really? really? Yeah. Oh, you should go back and watch oh, some man. of the video he, on that. He was terrified. Him and his wife were together. So, wait a minute. They tried to get Rand Paul there, and then the guy attacked Rand Paul on his. Yeah, that was two, two different two different things. Two different yeah. scenarios. Dang. Yeah, the one that the guy that, that tackled him, man, that must have, that, that punctured his lung and everything. And we didn't know it was that bad until later. Right. right. Yeah. He yeah, it was like infection in the lung and stuff. He was like, there was a chance he could have died. Yeah. 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 It's funny because we're working on a project with some of the guys I work with where we're going back and re-exploring those the bunker boy period. And it's fascinating. You can see how the media has just completely brainwashed people. And if you think of it just from a logical standpoint, okay, folks, just take off your I hate Trump or I love Trump hat. If there was, if you really believe that there was a violent insurrection that happened on January 6th, if you really do believe that, then how can you not apply those same principles to a violent event that happened at the White House that required the president of the United States to be taken to a bunker? You, you can't, you can't like either both were bad and either were bad. And, but if you go, like I say, if you go up to somebody on the left and go, oh, you remember Bunker Boy? They're going to laugh at him. Be like, oh, Trump's such a puss or whatever. What orange man bad. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember, I remember them making fun of him. And I remember uh, the White House coming out and saying, well, President <laughs> Trump was like, they were like, he was fighting the Secret Service. I ain't going down there. I ain't going down there. Nope, nope, nope. That that is what was coming out though, but honestly, I didn't see it as a weak move. I saw it as a protection move because yeah, it's not I didn't call. know how crazy the people were out there. You know what I'm saying? It's not his call. Well, Nothing that's what I'm saying. If if it gets right. violent, like quit making fun of Trump. If it gets violent enough that the Secret Service comes up and says you should probably go to the shelter, like we're talking about Bruh. way worse than January 6th, in my Bruh. opinion. Go downstairs, <laughs> right? <laughs> go downstairs. You. Yeah, exactly right. Look, if the head goes down and somebody's head is like this, 
follow it. Don't don't play. You're gonna hurt your neck. You are definitely gonna hurt your neck. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? I got I got a video I want to play for y'all. Um <laughs> I, I I wasn't gonna go here, but uh hey, well, it's money. I, it's Tuesday. Let's go nuts. Um yeah, this this is this is this is a young this is a young man. Uh I guess he was let me break it down for you. The young man, uh these these feminist porn stars uh, were they were they had a panel and uh, this this young man had a real legitimate question. Do you think that selling your nudes online and like do you think the money that you make from that translates to any sort of intelligence or skill or do you accept the fact that you have no skill and maybe lack a lot of intelligence, which is why you had to go down that path? That is a not lot. why I had to go down that path. I have a degree. A degree in what? Philosophy. You could have become a very well-respected lawyer, had a good career. What do you think your kids are going to think when they said, oh, my mom had two options? They could have been a philosopher and a lawyer who made a lot of money, but they decided to be an online ho for two years. And then when they got ugly, now nobody wants to hire them anymore because they ruined their name and their reputation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, truth, <laughs> truth can slap the shit out of you sometimes. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, "Boy, go, go, boy, go!" <laughs> Jesus, I think that that's man. one of the more fun things to see is that how there's this swing back where people are like, "Quit showing your ass on the internet." You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, I give um, I give a shout out to. Our, our friend Nick Searcy. Um, I give a shout out to him because I'm I'm back to you. I'm binge watching again. Uh, Justified. And uh, Nick Searcy was the marshal in charge. He was in charge of the U.S. Marshals for Justified. And uh, he doesn't get the recognition that he should for his role in Justified. He he played he played. He, actually, it was more than just. Um, it was more than just being in charge of the marshals. To me, he was almost a father figure to the main character. Even though the main character Raylan had a father, Arlo, uh, he was he was the main character. So yeah, I gave him a shout out to that. That was that was good. Yes, um, that that thing was um, Tubby t uh, was. Um, Tommy Tuberville? Tuberville. Yeah, we're gonna do next Monday. So nice. Tuberville, that will work. <laughs> I just bring, love it. bring receipts. <laughs> I want to hear some bios. Let me hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. Uh my host said bring receipts. I want to hear about these generals. I want to see how we're polluting our military. Somebody, I like how they think they can out stubborn Tommy Tuberville. Like, you know what? Somebody, somebody on my timeline caught him out. Of that. Yeah, um, uh, you ought to do something about Tommy Tuberville. He's stopping the people from from um, getting their ranks and stuff. I was like, yeah, I know, I agree with him. Indeed, I agree with him. I, you know that. I mean, but I look. I'm so glad Tommy Tuberville, man. That 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 just that. They contacted me. They were like, uh, hey, we want to come on y'all's show. He's a great story, too, because he's what congressmen and women should be. He had a job. He had a career. He's going in there to serve. It sounds like he's going to plans on serving a couple terms and going back out into the real world. Like, that's what we need. Are you a football coach? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Go really good one. Yeah. Like Alabama. Yeah, real, real, good. real good. Yep. Real, real good one. Um, and it's just... You know, it's it's just something about um, <laughs> just something about those southern guys. Though it's like when they talk, boy, they got you. They got you because it's it's like it's like you sit down sit down in a saloon and just listen to them for a long <laughs> time, just tell stories. You know, I, when I when I went in the army, I got I got stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia. Boy, I was looking around like I love this man. <laughs> this is all right. <laughs> and look, and, they don't and just today, got they don't just have Kentucky fried chicken. They got about six different ones down here. <laughs> oh yeah. 
<laughs> no, but to take to take those Georgia boys out of Georgia and to put them in different states, you yeah. know they from the South when you talk to them. You're like, God damn, boy, that 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 draw is like deep on you, boy. That, <laughs> Where you from? Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I, yeah, Stone I knew you. Mountain. Don't just <laughs> Stone Mountain, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get ready to go. Uh, want to thank again Red Voice Media. Let me get that up here because I've been talking about them, but I need to get that information up here. So John, go and follow them. Red Voice Media, right there. Red Voice Media. Um, again, we broadcast Monday through Thursday, twelve to one thirty p.m. on. Uh, redvoicemedia.com. You can also check out their Rumble. Just type in Red Voice Media. Also, check all the ones that all of you right now, all of you that are on Wayne Dupree show on Rumble because I don't know how it's being done. It's been it's been stuck at 216,000 followers for a year, almost like what Twitter did to me for about a couple of years. I don't know how it's possible. Subscribe to the channel. Just all of you that are right there right now, subscribe to the channel. JR, give me some last thoughts real quick. You know, I just want to say I've had fun watching the chat today. Some of our loyal viewers, Debbie, Terry, the uh Charlene, very active in the chat. I am gonna give Terry Bauman one challenge. Terry, loyal, loyal listener, loyal watcher. We don't always agree. Go look at any comparable measure between January 6th. And the riots for number of officers damaged, number of property damage that occurred. The only difference was they had more Secret Service and police at the White House that prevented them from breaking through the lines. Use any measure, though, to compare those two. Both were bad. Then look at what happened after. And you'll see one side had nothing happen. The other, the world's been thrown at them. That's what the point we're making. Thanks. And, for it, was, and it wasn't just one day either or one location. This happened all summer of 2020 in major right. U.S. cities, including mine and yours and Wayne's. Yep. I mean, this yep. happened all over the country, and it was organized by the Democrat Party. Yep. And nothing's happened. There, there's no comparison between the two, in my opinion. And you can't prosecute one side, not the other, folks. That's going to destroy the country. Not have a country. Right. Yep. Last time I touched. Amid the graft and the scandal, Ukraine is getting ready to appoint a Muslim defense chief. Rustam Umarov is from the Muslim Tartar community in Crimea wow. that largely resisted Russia's 2014 annexation. Go, wow. Vladimir. You know what you're doing. Break, break and report. Mark Zuckerberg privately told Facebook execs to be cautious about the mRNA vaccines because, quote, we just don't know the long-term side effects of basically modifying people's DNA and RNA. And I'd Zucker. like to I'd like to give condolences to the Zucker family uh, for his suicide next Thursday. Right. <laughs> I was gonna say, wasn't that exactly what we said that's got us nuked on, nuked on Facebook like two years ago? I remember reading the CDC's website like this manipulates your DNA. That can't be good. And people like I got a Twitter account nuked. And that that was based on yesterday's breaking. CDC has stated that Americans who have received mRNA COVID vaccines are now at a higher risk of infection from the new variants of the virus than those that are unvaccinated. Wouldn't it be awesome to have a, a, a Department of Justice? It would be so awesome to have a real DOJ and a real FBI that would bankrupt these people. Well, and whatever your politics are, when go out, read the CDC website for what the COVID vaccine does to you. It makes your body produce mutated cells. And that's never been tested at large scale right. in the right. history of the world. That's never been done. Right. And the fact you don't have to be some crazy conspiracy theorist, but say, this is really weird. We probably shouldn't force everybody to take it because we don't know what it's going to do. Right. And, and by the way, you inject it in there and it makes your body mutate cells and grow spikes like it's on the CDC website. Like, and, the wor and the worst part about it is they did know what it does. Right. 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 Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, long term. But like I'm saying, long term, who knows what it's going to do? Like, somebody I mean, knows. when does it start? When does it stop? You know, you look, you look at somebody's real educated people. Somebody knows. Oh, right. 
<laughs> oh yes, I'm, I'm just saying we don't know. Right, so if right. I'm like, I remember my wife and I we were talking like because her work was forcing her to get it, and she's like, "Are you going to?" And I'm like reading the instruction sheet for what it does, and I'm like, "Seems a little weird." I must not. <laughs> it's like a new software update. You never download the first software update. Right, Maybe right. version like you wait, you wait for the new, right? Yep. Let them work the bugs out. All right, y'all. Wednesday is here. We'll talk to you tomorrow.